years, even before the current ownership of Studio Designer, um, I was able to consult with the original owner and creator of Studio Designer, which was formerly Studio Webwear, and even prior to that, Studio Desktop, okay? For those of you that are super old school. Um, I've been a certified consultant for this company for over a decade. I know their software in and out, best practices, and I'm actually on most of the really early on tutorials, okay? In these next series of videos, I basically give you all the tools that you need to successfully own, operate, and manage your interior design or architect firm, okay? I include step-by-step -step processes for just about everything from setting up a brand new studio designer account, um, the process for project management and what that looks like, and the best practices for accounting and maintaining the books that we've set up. Moving along from the code setup, okay, that's, um, we're gonna go ahead and save and close, and it kicks you back out. You're gonna go back into settings under my company. And we've done company settings, we've done the codes, and we're gonna go ahead and pick up under report defaults. Now in through here, I'm gonna go ahead and select all this. Uh, what this does is it just is my, um, my default that I want a copy of everything that's sent from studio, okay? So if any, these are the things that can basically be sent out of studio. I'm asking for an, an email copy to myself on all of these, okay? And this RFQ, for those aren't that aren't in the know, it's a request for quote. It's what we send to the vendor that basically asks them to price it out for us. Okay, you have the ability to change the font, the print style, um, the address alignment. This is your company address alignment. You can change the image. Um, you would upload a logo in this section if applicable. I don't have a logo and I don't have one to uh, show you, so I'm going to leave that blank. Okay but that is there. Um, I may do a, another video specific to that. Um, I just don't wanna do that because a lot of things pop up when I do, okay? So I'm gonna move down to the header. This is gonna be where your address uh, shows up on the documents, okay? Some people want it at the foot or some people want it at the top, okay? You have, you have the ability to change that, whatever that might be. If you don't like the verbiage in any one of these, you can change that. Um, I don't recommend doing so, but I have seen people do, um, you know, request for deposit or under proposal. Um, some people have even changed it to invoice, which I don't recommend you do, um, unless it's a one-time thing for something. But otherwise, I think leaving these as they are um, is very uh, clear. Okay, this markup text or design fee is not visible unless you choose for it to be visible. Okay, so that's more of an internal thing. And in these report option defaults, you can see that, you know, a lot of this is pretty self-explanatory. Um, first component, this is going to be for items with multiple components, like a pillow. Pillow could have anywhere um, from three to four, even five vendors, right? We would have the fabricator, the person that's sewing the pillow. We would have the fabric, the fill. Um, you could even have trim, right? So that, that's four. Um, so if I selected that according to pr properly numbering the items and components, what that would do would be to have everything under the first component, which is the main component, right? I usually would pick that to be generically named because you can pretty much know that uh, the first component is going to usually always be the fabricator, right? I don't put fabrication. I just put um, living room pillow, right? And then I would have all the other components um, that follow suit. And I will have a video that kind of dives right into that so you can see how I do it, okay? And as you can see, it, it's only going to be on the proposals or the invoice, okay? It's only so the client does not see all the components that go into that item. They don't always like to know that <laughs> they might have paid more for fill than anything else or, you know, things like that. It's mainly an internal thing. It's because it would allow us to pay for different vendors um, and know specifically what the markups and um, what we made on each component, 
Okay, that's, that's why we do that. And it also gives us the ability to create a purchase order and potentially pay the four different vendors, right? If you have fabric and fill on the same vendor, I mean, it's totally up to you if you wanted to um, combine them. I don't recommend that only because it just keeps it all separate. If they come back to you, if you, if you lump them together and somebody comes back to you and says, you know what, um, I need to reselect the fabric. And if you lumped it, you now have to take the time to kind of break it apart. So I always, I always teach that let's set it up correctly the first time. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time to do that, but the time spent initially is always going to pay off in the long run. Okay. I'll dive into that in those videos. Okay. Showing the item number and component, that is something, um, again, dependent on whether you're using first item or not, but on all internal stuff, I always recommend it, okay? I don't ever show the selling markup to anybody, okay? And obviously here, you have to mark it to do so, okay? You have the ability to make these um, tweaks on the very uh, items, like on a one-off item, like when you create a proposal, and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. But these are very self-explanatory. If you want items that are taxable to have the little T next to them, you know, the same way that you might see on some receipts, that is what this would do, okay? So a lot of times we can hide, we have the opportunity to hide things that we don't want um, displayed on any uh, documents. In the last section for the report defaults, okay, under the company-wide setup, I am going to just leave these defaults as they are. We can discuss what changing them may do later on when we get further and have something to look at, okay? But for now, I'm going to just go and leave the company defaults as they are, okay? And it, it looks like this. And then um, we will dive back into that later, okay? I'm just trying to get everything in the order in which I want you to do them. Okay, we're going to dive right back to settings, my company. We've gone through company codes, report defaults, and we're going to dive right back into messages. Here, you have the ability to uh, align where the message is on the document. In this case, I do want it to be on the left, and I typically will uh, confirm verbiage. If you're going to change verbiage on things like an invoice or a proposal, I just I just like to make sure that um, the legal verbiage is, is accurate. So um, in this case, I did go ahead and prepare some samples. Um, I typed them out on a Word document and I'm going to just cut and paste them onto uh, my studio. Okay, so this is the message that shows on the bottom of your RFQ. This is a document that you are going to be typically sending to your vendors to request for pricing. Okay, I'm going to leave the spec message blank. I don't usually use that for anything. Um, in some cases, because they don't have pricing or anything, I, I've i seen where designers may give a spec book to uh, the client at the end of a project for insurance and for other reasons. Um, there is no pricing on it. And I'll show you what that looks like a little later. Okay, um, moving on, I'm going to uh, sh uh, put in the verbiage that I want on my proposals. And um, this is a specific verbiage. I've seen it on, you know, a number of different uh, uh, users. Okay, and it is it is uh, applicable to their state and, and individual uh, needs. Okay, there is you know, it's it's pretty long, but it does provide details, you know, for all the COVID delays and things like that. It also specifies that any interactive or online presentation or um, approvals are binding, okay? that That's kind of the important piece that's here, okay? And um, I kind of leave that as it is. Um, for the order, I am going to... Um, uh, do a, the, the piece that I want on my orders because this is um, information that would show up to my vendors when I um, send them the POs, okay? So I just put, please side mark each item as outlined per order. I will dive into side marks and how to use them later on. 
Um, so we're clear the CFA, CFA is cutting for approval that has to do with fabric. Okay. And I am going to do uh, my last little information uh, for my invoice. Okay, now if I wanted to include some other uh, link or way to pay, I have seen where you can put that information here and it is clickable, okay, on, on some most of doc the documents, like if it's a um, website or something like that. Okay, I'm going to leave that and if there are any specifics that are unclear, I recommend uh, sending me a message. Every time you save and close, it will take you back out to the home screen. So I'm gonna just go back in and we've covered messages. You could see that these are gonna be on the applicable documents. But when we move along to the email, these are the default emails that come up and auto-populate when you go to send any of those documents in the prior section. Okay, these can be updated even as you get ready to send them. So if any portion of what you put as a default does not apply, you, you still have the ability to revise it before sending. Okay, these again are just defaults. Almost everything can be revised uh, if needed, but these are uh, standard uh, verbiage for when we send these out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just complete these areas for what we're trying to do. Okay, and you can kind of get an idea of what it is I want to say to each um, uh, person that I may be sending these to. And bear in mind, these are default messages regardless of who you may be sending this to. Okay. And um, I am going to, let's see. Um, you can put uh, email addresses and contact info as well. Um, be mindful of what you share. These are not going to print anywhere on the item. These are basically for uh, the email portion only. Okay. Um, we're going to dive into the client portal, and that's the only one I didn't set up, and there's a reason for that. Stay tuned. Um, let me get the last one in. And then um, for this specific section, these are when you first send the access to each of these portals. There's a client portal and a vendor portal. Each of those are exactly what they, they read as. Um, this is where your clients can kind of view their project in real time, okay? So, but they have to get access in order to do that. Okay, they, they will not have access to anything you don't want them to see. They won't see the vendor or anything like that, so you never have to worry. And for the vendor portal, they kind of have to set that up with you as well, okay? And I will provide specific instructions when we get to that point, okay? That might be like later on in the field because I want to have uh, more information to work with when we go over that, okay? So I am going to save and close again. Okay, and when you go back, the last section here are the payment defaults. It's super easy. You can see how you could connect your Stripe account or PayPal, okay? Um, we also have uh, Payscape if you're an interior designer. That's the one that Studio operates in conjunction with, okay? and that is set up in a separate area, okay? So that really concludes the basic setup.